It's day two of CES slash day one, because it actually only started today, but all the other stuff happened before. It's There's multiple things going on. I'm very confused. Let's just get to the tech news. Yesterday was a busy day full of press conferences and keynotes, so here's our roundup of the biggest moments from them, starting with Sony, who unveiled a car. That's right, Sony showed off a car with 33 sensors that support self-driving features such as cameras, radar, and LiDAR. Inside, it features a huge touchscreen and speakers built into the seats. As you would expect from Sony, we were expecting news on the PlayStation 5, but didn't get much more than the name. PS5 and a logo, so we won't have more details until later in the year. Sony also has some new TVs on offer, and while the underlying technology isn't anything we haven't seen before, it looks like their 8K sets are going to become a bit more affordable as a smaller 75-inch model will be available soon. Let's move on to AMD, which headlined their press conference by officially unveiling the Ryzen Threadripper 3990X, the first ever consumer CPU with 64 cores and 128 threads. Woo! Fittingly, they announced that the price would be 3,990 US dollars. Oh, guys, not exactly cheap, but considering how many cores you're getting, it's a steal? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know how much that is per core and you can get it next month. Team Red also showed off its new Ryzen 4000 series CPUs for laptops as it tries to challenge Intel more in the laptop space than it has been in the past. And Line has got a chance to look at some of those in our CES coverage over on LTT, so check that out. It's expected that over 100 laptops will be available this year with the new CPUs. And for you gamers, there's a new mid-range Radeon line of graphics cards, the 5600 series, oh yeah. The 5600 XT, which is to compete with the GTX 1660 Ti from NVIDIA, will go for $279. I just can't get as excited about Radeon as I can about Ryzen. I'm sorry, AMD, you're almost there. But not to be outdone, Intel had a few announcements of its own, even if they weren't giving us CPUs with absurd core counts. In addition to the Ghost Canyon NUC that we covered in yesterday's episode, we also got our first official look at its new discrete GPU, which was running a demo of Destiny 2, although Intel was tight-lipped on specifications. However, Intel is expected to release its integrated GPU platform for laptops later this year. The company has also jumped on the foldable screen bandwagon, debuting a laptop codenamed Horseshoe Bend, which looks like a giant tablet that folds in the middle. Although at this point, it still appears to be a concept. But what a concept. Seems like everybody's making foldable display laptops. That's the thing, that's a, th that's a big theme. See, yes, it happened. Hey, you know what else is a theme? Seasonic sponsoring all of TechLinks. CES coverage. That's, it's a theme. How thematic is that? Thanks, Seasonic, for sponsoring today's video. Did you know that your power supply is the heart of your system? If you didn't, there you go. Seasonic is a leader in this category, offering efficient PSUs and outstanding performance. If you need a power supply for your new build or a replacement or upgrade, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't check out Seasonic. They've been doing this for 45 years, guys. Come on. Learn more about Seasonic products online through the links below. On to the quick bits. Samsung gave us some interesting and varied offerings besides just the curved monitor we saw yesterday. There's also the Ciro TV, which can rotate to view those vertical videos people love so much. Ugh. I don't, though. As well as Bally, a robotic ball that will follow you around the house. So eat your heart out, BB-8. Very exciting. Alienware announced a prototype fittingly dubbed the UFO, though it doesn't look much like a flying saucer. Instead, it bears a resemblance to the Nintendo Switch, but it plays PC games instead. Like the Switch, it has two controllers you can slide off and can also be connected to a larger screen. No word on availability yet, but one reviewer said the prototype was quite polished and felt like a finished product. Was that Alex that said that? Because Alex already took a look at it, and we have a video about that on LTT. Hisense has a reputation for flashy press conferences, and it doesn't get much flashier than a self-rising, laser-powered TV. Whoa! Its newest model, the L5, is going to go for $1,000 and uses a short-range laser projector to create an image from nothing. It's said to be very good for HDR content and has a massive 100-inch display Woo! if you want some real wow factor in your living room. Impress the, not just the ladies, everybody. Now for something a bit more offbeat. With the success of Impossible Foods' fake beef making its way into Burger Kings around the US, the company is now trying its hand at pork. Oh. It showed off both Impossible Pork and Impossible Sausage, with the latter debuting at, you guessed it, Burger King later this month. 
I guess it wasn't impossible after all. And Toyota clearly isn't impressed with TVs and fake sausage, as it basically said, screw you guys, we're building a city? The automaker is planning to turn the site of an old car factory into a prototype city for testing EVs, robots, and other futuristic technology. Up to 2,000 people could live there, with the entire thing powered by hydrogen fuel cells, including the people. But let's just hope Mount Fuji doesn't erupt anytime soon, as the city will be positioned right at its base. Ooh, ending on a ominous note there. Right, anyways, thanks for watching, and be sure to come back tomorrow for all the latest from CES 2020. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for me to go lose some money at the tables. I don't do that. John, come on. I'm responsible. Ah, thanks. Gotta stay hydrated.